In the last year, we have seen rapid progress in 3D generation, such as generating a 3D model from a text prompt or a single image. Let's learn how this method works in this video. Using 3D data to tackle the 3D generation problem is a logical step. In recent years, the community has collected large-scale datasets of 3D assets with diverse appearance and shapes. But they are much smaller compared to the available 2D image datasets. Let's start with leveraging the 2D datasets using diffusion models. How do diffusion models work? The core idea is to learn a noise to data mapping. This direction is hard. The other direction is much simpler. By progressively adding noise, we create a path from a data sample to a noise sample. This is known as diffusion. If we traverse this path backward, we can transform a noise sample into a data sample. Let's collect lots of data and create many such paths. We now have the training data to train a noise prediction network. The noise predictor takes a noisy image, the time step as input, and predicts what the added noise was from the previous time step. After training, we can use the trend noise predictor to transform a noise sample back into a data sample by following the predicted path. We can control our generation by conditioning the model with a text prompt. However, the conditional generation itself doesn't work very well. A common tree is jointly training an unconditional model to estimate a noise with a no text condition. We can then use the noise extrapolated away from unconditional prediction. This is known as classifier-free guidance. Let's simplify this block by calling it noise prediction. These train models allow us to iteratively update the samples in pixel space. But this only works for 2D images. The shape and appearance of a 3D object are encoded by some parameter theta. How can we use 2D diffusion models to update the 3D representation in parameter space? We can look at the training loss of diffusion models. The model training involves optimizing the parameters phi of the noise predictor network. With the train diffusion network, we can sample an image x by minimizing this loss. Here's the gradient of the loss function with respect to parameter theta. With this gradient, we can iteratively update our 3D representation using gradient descent. The DreamFusion paper shows that removing the UNet Jacobian makes the optimization more efficient and works better. This leads to a simple update direction based on a pre-trained 2D diffusion model. This is known as spore distillation sampling. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have a 3D representation, a radiance field parameterized by our MLP with parameter theta. We obtain an image X through rendering. Now we can sample noise from a Gaussian distribution and create a noisy version ZT. Our pre-trained diffusion model then estimated noise. We then compute the noise residual and use it as gradients to backpropagate for updating the parameter theta. Here are the text to 3D results from DreamFusion. Wow! It's amazing to see that all these high quality 3D assets are generated from simple text prompts only. Okay, but this was more than one year ago. Let's talk about some of the recent developments. Rendering a high resolution image from a radiance field is computationally expensive. Magic 3D addressed this problem by first training a low-resolution radiance field, extract the 3D mesh, and continuing to refine the 3D mesh with SDS updates. The two-stage approach gives us high-resolution 3D mesh models. Next, how can we improve the training speed? We can replace the 3D representation from a NERF MLP with Gaussian splatting. We can see that the training now converges much faster. Instead of optimizing the texture only, we can optimize the surface material for photorealistic rendering. How can we enable single image 3D reconstruction? We first add a reconstruction loss between the rendered image and the input image. We then render the 3D representation from novel viewpoints and perform SDS updates. All these improvements are exciting. But if you look at the DreamFusion's results, these 3D models often have blurry appearance and saturated colors. How do we improve this? We need to take a closer look at what the score distillation sampling is doing. First, here is the estimated noise with classifier-free guidance. Again, this comes from taking the estimated noise from conditional and unconditional models and extrapolating away along this direction so that the generation will match your text plumb better. 
Let's call this direction delta condition and simplify this equation. Now let's look at an estimate noise from the unconditioned model. Here the input noisy image ZT is constructed by this equation. However, during training, the clean image X comes from a dataset of real images. During the score desolation sampling, the image X is a rendered image from the current 3D representation. This means that the rendered image are considered out of domain for the noise prediction model. Here is an example. When we use a noisy version of a natural image as input, here is the noise predicted by the unconditional model. We can see the predicted noise does not reflect the content of the input. Let's try this out of domain image. It has the same but slightly blurrier content. By subtracting delta denoising from the prediction, we get the domain correction component. Adding this domain correction components to the input gives us more realistic results. So how does score desolation sampling work? The gradient update consists of a domain correction component that tries to make your render image look real. A conditional component that tries to align the content with your text palm. The third component is the difference between the predicted noise and the added noise. This is usually noisy because the inputs to these diffusion models are out of domain. So the idea is to keep the good ones and discard the bad ones. For the condition, this is just the difference between the noise estimated from the conditional model and the unconditional model. The domain correction part is tricky. We can compute an estimate noise from the unconditional model. Hmm. But we don't know which components are for domain correction and which components are for denoising. In this paper, they propose to extract domain correction components using negative plums. With this simple change, we see solid improvement in the appearance of the 3D models. No more saturated colors or blurry content. We can also use the insight to explain how other methods work. Here we have the variational score desolation update. It computes the noise residual between the estimate noise from the conditional model and the LoRa model. Due to the fine tuning, the estimate noise from the LoRa model does not have domain correction and condition components. The noise residual does only consist of components that make the content realistic and align with the text form. These are the results of Prolific Dreamer. Nice! These results are great, but if you look closely, you will see something is a little bit off. For example, this dragonfly with four wings and the two dragons breaking out of the egg at the same time. If we look at the samples of a chair from 2D diffusion models, we see that most of the samples are frontal view of the chairs. These 2D models may not know what a chair from a rare viewpoint looks like. Going back to the datasets. So far we are only using 2D datasets. How can we use 3D data? One simple way is to render images from a 3D model. We can now train your favorite 2D diffusion model to take one image as input and synthesize the image at novel viewpoint conditioned on the relative camera pose. This view conditional diffusion model works quite well. The core idea is fine-tuning a 2D diffusion model for the view synthesis test. As the model learns the 3D prior from 3D data, we can apply them for 3D reconstruction. On the left, we see using 2D priors only suffers from multi-phase artifacts. In the middle, the 3D prior helps synthesize better geometry but has blurry appearance. On the right, using both 2D and 3D priors produce good geometry and appearance. Recent work further improved the appearance quality by combining the ideas of 2D and 3D priors with improved score distillation. Here, DreamQuest 3D first gets coarse geometry results using both 2D and 3D priors, and then focus on improving the appearance using a variant of variational score distillation sampling. This gives really impressive single image to 3D model results. So there are a lot of benefits of training the model to predict one view. But it's trivial to render a 3D model from many viewpoints. We can first train your favorite model to predict multiple views simultaneously from a single image. We can extend a single viewpoint prediction to multiple ones. Here is one example of text to 3D generation. Compared to prior work, such an approach does not suffer from multi-phase artifacts. Here's another work with a similar idea but conditioned on a 2D image. 
Okay, what else can we learn from the 3D dataset? In addition to rendering RGB images, we can also render some geometric information. This work trains a view conditional diffusion model to synthesize some geometric priors. The prior can then be used to improve existing text to 3D models. Another example to synthesize surface normal maps at number of viewpoints. Let's have a brief recap. Most of these approaches require optimizing 3D representations. However, training this 3D representation can be time consuming. Can we have a more direct methods? For example, given a single input image, let's train a transformer to predict the 3D representation directly. Given a single input image, we first extract this image feature and use a transformer to convert the image feature to a triplane based radiance field representation. We can supervise the entire model with a view synthesis loss. Here are some examples of single image 3D reconstruction. As it does not involve per instance optimization, it only takes 5 seconds to predict the 3D representation from a single image. Okay, this is cool, but the results are somewhat blurry. Let's use 2D diffusion models to produce multi view images with detailed appearances, and then use the transformer to predict the 3D representation. Here's how it works. We extract image features of individual views, concatenate them together, and use the same transformer to predict the 3D. This is great, but the use of diffusion model and the transformer architecture feels a bit disconnected. Let's use the transformer itself as a multi-view image denoiser. We take multiple noisy images as input, use a transformer to predict a clean triplane representation, and then add slightly less noise back on the render images for the next denoising iterations. Here are some 3D models reconstructed from this method. In summary, we have seen rapid progress in 3D content generation. We first leverage 2D priors from pre-trained diffusion models using SDS. We then improve the method to achieve higher resolution, richer appearance, faster training speed, single view 3D, and photorealistic appearance. The 3D prior can be learned from predicting one novel view, multiple novel views, and associate geometry information like surface normal. We also start seeing more efforts in building generalizable models using Transformer and integrating it with the diffusion model. It's a super exciting research topic with many practical applications. I can't wait to see even more progress in the next year.